The Toronto Star is a Canadian broadsheet daily newspaper. Based on 2015 statistics, it is Canada's highest circulation newspaper on overall weekly circulation. Although it is a close second to the Globe and Mail in daily circulation on weekdays, it overtakes the Globe in weekly circulation because the Globe does not publish a Sunday edition. The Toronto Star is owned by Toronto Star Newspapers Limited, a subsidiary of Torstar Corporation and part of Torstar's Daily News Brands division. Topic: History. Topic: Formation. The Star, originally known as the Evening Star and then the Toronto Daily Star, was created in 1892 by striking Toronto news printers and writers, led by future mayor of Toronto and social reformer Horatio Clarence Hawken, who became the newspaper's founder, along with another future mayor, Jimmy Simpson. The Star was first printed on Toronto World Presses, and at its formation, the world owned a 51% interest in it as a silent partner. That arrangement only lasted for two months, during which time it was rumoured that William Findlay, Billy, McLean, the world's proprietor, was considering selling the star to the Riordan family. After an extensive fundraising campaign among the star staff, McLean agreed to sell his interest to Hawken. The paper did poorly in its first few years. Hawken sold out within the year, and several owners followed in succession until railway entrepreneur Sir William Mackenzie bought it in 1896. Its new editors, Edmund E. Shepard and Frederick Thomas Nichols, moved the entire star operation into the same building used by the magazine Saturday Night. This would continue until Joseph E. Holy Joe. Atkinson, backed by funds raised by supporters of Sir Wilfrid Laurier, bought the paper. The supporters included Senator George Cox, William Mullock, Peter Charles Larkin and Timothy Eaton. Topic. Atkinson's influence Atkinson was the star's editor from 1899 until his death in 1948. The newspaper's early opposition and criticism of the Nazi regime saw it become one of the first North American papers to be banned in Germany. Atkinson had a social conscience. He championed many causes that would come to be associated with the modern welfare state, old age pensions, unemployment insurance, and health care. The Government of Canada Digital Collections website describes Atkinson as a radical in the best sense of that term. The Star was unique among North American newspapers in its consistent, ongoing advocacy of the interests of ordinary people. The friendship of Atkinson, the publisher, with Mackenzie King, the Prime Minister, was a major influence on the development of Canadian social policy. Atkinson became the controlling shareholder of the Star. The Star was frequently criticized for practicing the yellow journalism of its era. For decades, the paper included heavy doses of crime and sensationalism, along with advocating social change. From 1910 to 1973, the Star published a weekend supplement, the Star Weekly. Shortly before his death in 1948, Joseph E. Atkinson transferred ownership of the paper to a charitable organization given the mandate of continuing the paper's liberal tradition. In 1949, the province of Ontario passed the Charitable Gifts Act, barring charitable organizations from owning large parts of profit making businesses, that effectively required the star to be sold. Atkinson's will had directed that profits from the paper's operations were for the promotion and maintenance of social, scientific, and economic reforms which are charitable in nature, for the benefit of the people of the province of Ontario and it stipulated that the paper could be sold only to people who shared his social views. The five trustees of the charitable organization circumvented the act by buying the paper themselves and swearing before the Supreme Court of Ontario to continue what became known as the Atkinson Principles. A strong, united and independent Canada. Social justice. Individual and civil liberties. Community and civic engagement. The rights of working people 
the necessary role of government descendants of the original owners, known as the Five Families, still control the voting shares of Torstar, and the Atkinson principles continue to guide the paper to this day. In February 2006, Star Media columnist Antonia Zerbiges wrote on her blog, Besides, we are the star which means we all have the Atkinson principles, and its multi-culti values, tattooed on our butts. Fine with me. At least we are upfront about our values, and they almost always work in favor of building a better Canada. Topic. Involvement with broadcasting From 1922 to 1933, the star was also a radio broadcaster on its station CFCA, broadcasting on a wavelength of 400 meters (749.48 kilohertz), whose coverage was complementary to the paper's reporting. The station was closed following the establishment of the Canadian Radio Broadcasting Commission and the introduction of a government policy that, in essence, restricted private stations to an effective radiated power of 100 watts. The Star would continue to supply sponsored content to the CRBC CRCT station, which later became CBC station CBL, an arrangement that lasted until 1946. Topic 1970s to present in 1971, the newspaper was renamed the Toronto Star and moved to a modern office tower at 1 Young Street by Queen's Quay. The original Star building at 80 King Street, West was demolished to make room for First Canadian Place. The new building originally housed the paper's presses. In 1992, the printing plant was moved to the Toronto Star Press Centre at the Highway 407 and 400 Interchange in Vaughan. In September 2002, the logo was changed, and the was dropped from the papers. During the 2003 Northeast Blackout, the Star printed the paper at a press in Welland, Ontario. Until the mid-2000s, the front page of the Toronto Star had no advertising aside from lottery jackpot estimates from the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation OLG. On May 28, 2007, the Star unveiled a redesigned paper that features larger type, narrower pages, fewer and shorter articles, renamed sections, more prominence to local news, and less so to international news, columnists, and opinion pieces. However, on January 1, 2009, the Star reverted to its previous format. Star PM, a free newspaper in PDF format that could be downloaded from the newspaper's website each weekday afternoon, was discontinued in October 2007, 13 months after its launch. On January 15, 2016, Torstar confirmed the closure of its Vaughn printing presses and that it will outsource printing to Transcontinental Printing, leading to the layoff of all 285 staff at the plant as Transcontinental has its own existing facility, also in Vaughan. In 2018, the Toronto Star expanded its local coverage of Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton and Halifax with rebranded daily newspapers, previously known as Metro, as Star Metro. In 2018, the Toronto Toronto Star acquired iPolitics, a political news outlet. Topic: The Star Brand. Topic: Editorial Position. Like its competitor, The Globe and Mail, The Star covers a spectrum of opinion that is best described as urban and central Canadian. In character, the star is generally centrist and centre-left, and is more socially liberal than the Globe and Mail. The paper has aligned itself over the years with the progressive Atkinson Principles, named for publisher Joseph E. Atkinson, who was editor and publisher of the paper for 50 years. These principles included social justice and social welfare provision, as well as individual rights and civil liberties. In 1984, scholar Wilfred H. Kesterton described the star as perpetually indignant because of its social consciousness. When Atkinson's son Joseph Story Atkinson became president of the star in 1957, he said, 
From its inception in 1892, the Star has been a champion of social and economic reform, a defender of minority rights, a foe of discrimination, a friend of organized labor and a staunch advocate of Canadian nationhood. Another of the «Atkinson principles» has been a «strong, united and independent Canada». In a 1927 editorial, the paper wrote, we believe in the British connection as much as anybody does but on a self-respecting basis of equality, of citizenship, and not on the old basis of one country belonging to the other." The paper was historically wary of American influence, and during the debates over the North American Free Trade Agreement, the paper was frequently critical of free trade and expressed concerns about Canadian sovereignty. The paper has been traditionally supportive of official bilingualism and maintaining Canadian unity in opposition to Quebec separatism. In the 1980s, Michael Farber wrote in the Montreal Gazette that the Star's coverage was Toronto centric to the point that any story was said to carry an explanation as to what it means to Metro. Conversely, Canadian sociologist Elka Winter wrote in 2011 that the Toronto Star was less Toronto centric than its rival, The Globe and Mail, writing that the star "...consciously reports for and from Canada's most multicultural city," and catered to a diverse readership. <laughs> <laughs> Election endorsements In the 50 years to 1972, the star endorsed the Liberal Party in each federal general election. In the 14 federal elections between 1968 and 2015, the Star endorsed the Liberal Party ten times, the New Democratic Party two times, and the Progressive Conservative Party two times. Elections in which the Star did not endorse the Liberals took place in 1972 and 1974, when it endorsed the Progressive Conservatives, and 1979 and 2011, when it endorsed the NDP. In the 2011 election in which the Star endorsed the NDP under Jack Layton, but to avoid vote splitting that could inadvertently help the Conservatives under Stephen Harper, which it saw as the worst outcome for the country, the paper also recommended Canadians vote strategically by voting for the progressive candidate best placed to win in certain writings. For the 2015 election, the Star endorsed the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau. In Toronto's nonpartisan mayoral elections, the Star endorsed George Smitherman in 2010 and John Tory in 2014. Topic: Features. The Star is one of the few Canadian newspapers that employs a public editor. Ombudsman and was the first to do so. Its newsroom policy and journalistic standards guide is also published online. Other notable features include an in-depth world news section called World Weekly. On Saturdays, this section is only available to residential subscriptions without any additional payment and the section contains no advertisements. Optional supplements on Saturday and Sunday include Starweek television listings and episode summaries, abridged version of the New York Times International section, New York Times crosswords, editorials, and book reviews. Starweek and the New York Times supplements require separate additional payment. The Star states that it favors an inclusive, big tent approach, not wishing to attract one group of readers at the expense of others. It publishes special sections for Chinese New Year and Gay Pride Week, along with regular features on real estate including condominiums, individual neighborhoods and street name etymologies, shopping, cooking, dining, alcoholic beverages, right down to having an exclusive on the anti-competitive practices of the beer store that led to major reforms on the sale of alcohol in Ontario grocery stores in 2015 by Premier Kathleen Wynne and Ed Clark, automobiles as wheels, and travel destinations. Since the mid-2010s, the sports and business sections are consolidated on some days and eventually, all weekdays. Topic. Competitive position The advent of the National Post in 1998 shook up the Toronto newspaper market. 
In the upheaval that followed, editorial spending increased and there was much hiring and firing of editors and publishers. Topic. Current developments Topic. Sing Dao Daily In 1998, the Toronto Star purchased a majority stake in Sing Dao's Canadian newspaper Sing Dao Daily, which it jointly owns with Sing Dao News Corporation. Sing Dao Daily encountered controversy in April 2008, after media watchers discovered the paper had altered a translated Toronto Star article about the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympic Games protests to adhere to Chinese government's official line. Sing Dao's then-editor Wilson Chan was fired over this. Topic. Paywall In October 2012, The Star announced its intention to implement a paywall on its website, thestar.com, which was made effective on August 13, 2013. Readers with daily home delivery had free access to all its digital content. Those without a digital subscription can view up to 10 articles a month. The paywall does not apply to its sister sites, such as Wheels.ca Automotive News and Classifieds or Workopolis Career Search. However, during late 2013, the Star announced that it would end its paywall, which it did on April 1, 2015. In June 2018, the Star announced it was implementing a paywall again and has the same restrictions as its previous paywall implementation. Topic. Star Touch Tablet App On September 15, 2015, the Toronto Star released the Toronto Star Touch tablet app, which was a free interactive news app with interactive advertisements. It was discontinued in 2017. At launch, it was only available for the iPad, which uses iOS. Based on a similar app for Montreal-based La Presse released in 2013, Star Touch is the first such app for any English-language news organization, quality-wise. In slightly over 50 days since launch, the app had reached the 100,000 download milestone. The Android version was launched on December 1, 2015. The iOS version is rated 12 plus by Apple's App Store guidelines and the Android version is rated Mature 17 plus by the Entertainment Software Rating Board ESRB. Topic. Closing of printing plants On January 15, 2016, the Toronto Star announced it would close its printing plant in Vaughan and outsource all print production starting in July 2016. The newspaper said the closure was effected, so it could better focus on its digital outlets. Topic. Circulation. The Toronto Star has seen, like most Canadian daily newspapers, a decline in circulation. Its total circulation dropped by 22% to 318,763 copies daily from 2009 to 2015. Daily average. Topic. Internship program shelved. In February 2018, the Toronto Star suspended its internship program indefinitely to cut its costs. Long a source of Canada's next generation of journalists, the paid positions were seen as a vital part of the national industry, and their suspension, a sign of its continuing decline. Topic. Notable star personalities, past and present. Topic. Publishers Topic. Presidents and CEOs of Torstar 
Belen Honderich 1966 to 1988 as president, 1976 to 1988 as CEO and chair. David R. Jolly 1988 to 1994. David A. Galloway 1988 to 2002. J. Robert S. Pritchard 2002 to 2009. David P. Holland 2009 to 2017. John Boynton 2017 present. Topic: Journalists and columnists. Topic: Cartoonists. Topic: Office locations of the Toronto Star. The Toronto Star has been located at several addresses from 1892 to 1970. 1892 to 83 Young Street, shared with the Toronto World. 1896 to 26 minus 28 Adelaide Street West. 1905 to 18 minus 20 King Street West. 1929 to 80 King Street West Old Toronto Star Building 1970 1 Young Street Topic See also Grant V Torstar Corp Metroland Media Group largest division of company Timeline of Rob Ford video scandal as the Toronto Star played a major role in uncovering the scandal, along with other media. Shop TV Canada, a Torstar operated infomercial channel defunct since November 2013. Equals <laughs> equals notes. <laughs>